Welcome to 1063 Comics. This is going to be your week 34 long format video. So I do a bunch of one minute shorts that uh, I just use to show all the different little things that are going on. But this is the video where we take our time and we're going to check them out. So I have a screen recording running of my CLZ and cover price and I'm going to bring that up and it's going to go over here. All right. So the first book up is Destro. Now this book, I'm still catching up on it. So issue three, I have not read yet. I've only uh, read issue one, but you know, it's not bad. The art looks good and it picks up from Cobra Commander, which I really liked. So, you know, I'm, I'm, very hopeful for this series. Next up, we've got Red Coat. I've liked this book. I said it before, it's like, what if a mortal was kind of a bumbling, um, not idiot, but because he is smart, he's been alive a long time, but he doesn't really just, he hasn't really, you know, every immortal that you usually see is like somebody clever, they're rich, they've got lots of money, you know, because they're, they've are they been alive so long they figured it out. Whereas he's kind of just, you know, he's broke, he's always looking for food and beer. It's just funny. Uh, anyway, it's been good. It's part of the Ghost Universe, which has been awesome. Uh, Rook Exodus, which I missed last week because of tech issues going into the long form video, but is really good. Uh, next up, we've got Rat City. I've liked this. This is like McFarlane 2099. Um, the art's been good. The story for like future spawn is really cool. Um, if you kind of want to jump on something, you know, spawn related a little early and some of the, the main issues are a little bit much, you know, this is a great one. You get stuff like this. Awesome. And this is only issue five. And, you know, it's, you can tell that they're in it for the long haul. This isn't a typical Marvel story, you know, five issues and done. This is something they're putting a little bit more effort into, which is nice to see. Uh, next up, we've got this Liam Sharp Starhenge uh, graphic novella. I can't say enough about this. Um, I read the original... Uh, Star Hinge. I think it was like had a weird title. Probably a lot of people missed it. It was like Boar's Head Part One or something. This is just next level. You know, this is why when I look at some comics from Marvel, I get so annoyed. This comic, like Liam Sharp in particular, he makes me expect more out of other comics. Really cool. I can't wait to read this. Highly recommend picking it up. I think it's only like a week old and it's a one-off and you can probably easily find uh, the other ones. Uh, the, I think it was like a five issue thing. Next up, we've got uh, Titans. This cover is probably one of the best Titans covers I've seen in a while. This is the regular cover, which isn't horrible. Uh, it's better than they have been recently, uh, but it's been good. Carries on this uh, Rachel as you know, you know, swapped out type storyline, and uh, it's been not bad. This storyline, you know, I don't expect consequences in comics anymore. Next up, we've got this Superman. Santana cover. Uh, it looks like a Zerdy cover. I can't really read that, sorry. Uh, Superman's been good. This will follow the um, Absolute Power storyline, which isn't bad, I have to admit. Um, I thought it was going to be worse, but I like the idea. I don't mind it. It's pretty cool. 
So, I, but I'm not getting all of the books. I'm not getting Task Force, whatever. Um, I'm not getting almost all of them. Nightwing, um, wow. It's tough to say too much about this cover. So this is the regular cover. And the one that I got is, is up there. And like even just looking at it now, it, it's it's like a Frank Miller, but it's not. Um, Subic, I think. I'm not sure how he says the name. Sorry. But it's just the style of it is awesome. Interior is pretty much the same as usual there. No surprises. Um, not that that's, you know, a bad thing. I like the art in this. Uh, I'm just kind of the story. I'm deciding if I'm going to drop this title or not. Then we've got this. This this makes me laugh. So I don't know anything about this book. This is Jenny Sparks number one. Uh, I believe it's written by Tom King and this cover is by Gilliam March. So I saw this in the previews or somebody sent it to me and I'm like, oh, you know what? That's a pretty good looking cover. I'll get it. So I was flipping through this book just to see. I wanted to see what the regular cover was, which is this. And I was like, okay, well, what, what is this? What's this all about? So to me, with like three page flips, you know, I was like, oh, so it's, and I could be completely wrong. I haven't read this yet. I don't know. But it seems like it's a um, female Constantine type character. Smokes, British, probably talks like that in the comic. So we'll see. Next up is this All Winter. It carries on from uh, the other series, the Dark Knights of Steel series. And I wasn't going to buy it. I liked the cover from the first issue. Um, I thought it was cool. It was um, Deathstroke in the past. And it's got a neat style to it, mostly black and white with just a couple of shades of color. The one, only the one kid is color. There's something to do with magic about this. And I can't remember who the kid is. Might be his kid. Um, but you know what? It's good. And the backup story, wow, um, the art, unbelievable really great. It's probably the best backup story I've read in a long time. So it's it's good. So I've been getting it. Uh, and it's you could probably still pick up issue one fairly easy if you wanted to catch up. It's a pretty good story. Next up, we've got this Wonder Woman 12. Uh, this is another Gillian, Gillian March. Um, this is the swimsuit something or other, swimsuit variant. Great cover. This is the regular cover. This will have to do with absolute power as well. Um, I like this. The Wonder Woman I've liked. There's been, you know, low points in this series for sure. I'm not going to deny that. There's been some, you know, questionable things. But uh, it's been a good read. And, you know, it's issue 12. Not hard to find issues. But I don't know how long I'll get that one either. Star Wars into Marvel now. So I read the last issue of this, issue 48. I just read it. That's how far behind I am. And it was good. It was finally the end of that trial of um, Lando. It was just boring, in my opinion. But this one's been different. It's been a cool story so far. I think this is the second or third part of it. This might be the third part. And it's just, you know, I've liked it. Star Wars is always hit and miss with me. Some, some months it's great 
and the art is on and the story is good and other times it's just like everything was rushed. So next up we got this Predator Black Panther. I haven't really looked through this at all, really. Uh, it reminds me of the Transformers art. So let's see. Looks like Chris Allen, maybe. Not bad. It's a pretty thick book, really. It's a five ninety nine title. Then we have this awesome Juan Ferreira um, Ghost Rider cover. This is the, I believe, the final issue of the Hood versus Johnny. Again, I just read the last issue of this, so I'm right up to speed on it. I know what's going on. He's Johnny's got his old OG um, Ghost Rider costume on and he's on the hunt for Zathros and you know the hood has him right now and Miss Fitzu is involved like it's it's good it's a good read but this is the last issue I think it leads into um, Spirits of Vengeance so we'll have to see I'm looking forward to reading this one next up we've got uh, Miles Morales, Annual. I don't know anything about this one. These are all connected somehow, like Infinity Stories or something, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, Storm's in it, though. It's cool. See what that's about in this annual. So this next one, I was thinking about it today as I was going through these books because again I just read issue nine of this. It's like it's funny to go through these because I'm finally like getting to my Marvel stuff. And um this book is just so good. Like when I think of it compared to like Amazing Spider-Man, like Things are happening in this. The art is good. The covers are good. You know, the interior art is good. I mean, look, there's lots going on here. And the story is interesting and good. And it's got, there's things happening. You know, it just makes me sad to, my poor Amazing Spider-Man title is, on, on a respirator, it seems to me right now. So next up, we've got part of the Venom War. I don't know the order you got to read these in, uh, but this uh, character, I love the idea of this character. You know, aside from a few temporary type hosts, uh, the symbiotes have always kind of bonded to you know, you had Flash, who was a soldier, so he had that experience. But I wouldn't call him an elite soldier, for sure. Um, but then you've got an alien bonding with Black Widow, like an elite soldier assassin type person. And to me, that's a story that just kind of writes itself. There's a lot you can do with that. Next up, we've got Ultimate Spider-Man 8. I'm going to show you, so I bought the A cover, and I'll show you this cover. I, I love that outline cover. It's really cool. Kingpin in the background. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm trying to think if he's had an appearance in the Ultimate Universe yet besides now. I am not 100% sure of that. Because there's, what, Ultimate X-Men? He has not been in that. There's Ultimate Ultimates. I don't think he's been in that. There's Ultimate Black Panther. I don't think he's been in that. So this could be, I wonder what it says here. Nope, doesn't say. Doesn't say, I have to try to figure that out. 
but this book for me, um, it's what Amazing Spider-Man should be. You know, uh, supposedly in Amazing Spider-Man, like he's got a new love interest. I haven't read that yet. That's on my list to read. It should be in this pile actually uh, when I get there. Or it's in my, the pile from last week, this one. Uh, next up, Venom War Carnage. I uh, love that cover, very cool. Carnage, obviously they're going to do something with Carnage in this series for sure. It's um, long overdue. It was kind of, in my opinion, a little bit out of hand. I mean, that's, you know, le you know let me know because I, I kind of am on the fence on, and I've talked about it before, you know, with a few of the characters, like all the spider characters and all the Venom characters. Like, what do they do? with all these characters because a lot of them are really good. Like you can't just go back to having just Spider-Man because Miles is awesome. Gwen is awesome. You know, and there's a bunch of other, you know, Spider-Woman is awesome. But at the same time, like there's so many, it, it, it must be uh, a challenge to kind of fit them all into different things for sure. Um, so that's why they kind of have some stumbles, I think. Uh, next up, Wolverine Revenge. So I just read the title bit from this. So I'll just let you know in advance, this is not really a spoiler, but this is kind of the time frame of where this takes place. Uh, it just says, no one knows how it happened, as no one lived who was there. What is known that as Asteroid M burned up on re-entry, Magneto breathed his last breath, and when he died, it released the largest EMP in the history of mankind. Then the Northern Hemisphere went dark. That was 10 days ago. So I think this is uh, picking up from the 90s storyline. Um, it does look good. And I'll tell you now, there is a red band version of this. And what I'm going to do is, if you're interested... As soon as I'm done this video, I'm going to um, record a comparison of the two. Uh, I'm going to try something a little bit different with it than I have been. Um, there's the red band, so you can see um, in the A cover, uh, there's just there's no there's less blood on the cover. Um, so yeah, so we'll compare the red band versus the regular one. And what I can say based on my experience with Blood Hunt is that there's probably only about four pages that are um, different, but we'll look into it. I don't, I, I, I guess I do have it, but I don't wanna get into that here. I'll, what I'll do is I'll record it and I'll put it at the end of this. That way, if you wanna watch it, you can, but I'll also post it as a separate thing. So if you just wanna watch about that, you can. So carrying on, we have this awesome, which doesn't show up there quite as good, like this. I, I said it in a post. I don't know how much say um, Nakayama has over how the foil is applied, if any, but somehow his foil covers are the best. The other ones just aren't as good. Like if you look at his uh, fire and ice cover, it's amazing. And there's been others too. And then I have this wicked art germ, uh, Wolverine revenge. I mean, it's a good cover. Wow. The talent of some people is just unbelievable. Then we've got Deadpool. So I'll show you this cover. I'll leave it on this one. I'm at the store and I'm going through and I have a couple of Deadpool covers and I'm like, okay, well, there's the inside. I'm like, well, I looked at the other covers. I had one set aside. So I was like, oh, what's this one? And it was the dog pool movie thing. And I'm like, 
It's just so absurd. I'll get it. So I ended up picking it up. Then we've got Scarlet Witch, which again, I just read this issue, so or this previous issue. So I'm all up to speed on this. It was a pretty good issue, actually. I like the interiors. Uh, Wanda's kind of finding her way back. That's a great page there. Awesome. And, oh, that's good too. Really cool there, that. These interiors are good. The story is good. Like this is an underrated book. Um, so this is Dodderman and Campani as the artists. Great job, really good. I just don't understand why they just can't leave it running. Like just leave it as an ongoing. Then my last one from the new batch is this awesome Derek Chu cover of Phoenix issue two. So again, I just read this one, left off with uh, Phoenix joining up with uh, the Star Jammers or Corsair. I know there was a little bit of uh, internet drama about this book, about some of the panels being lifted from other books. Um, I, to be honest, without knowing that, I did kind of recognize some of the panels. I was like, I don't know, I think I've seen this before uh, because it wasn't even like it was, you know, rare panels that were lifted. It was pretty popular books. But this was, a, it was a good read. I enjoyed it. So we'll see what happens in this one. All right. Thank you very much. So if you could leave a comment, ask a question. Um, let me stop this now. Sorry. Oh man, I keep forgetting all my kids' stuff is older. So, if you could leave a comment, it helps. I can see it. It YouTube is a strange place to live. That's why I kind of always talk about this stuff at the end of these videos. Um, it's really strange, so I do eight to ten shorts every week, and none of them ever go over 500 views. They're all exactly the same. The titles are the same. I just change a, a number of the week in them for the most part. You know, I'm starting to figure out, you know, if I post like eight or nine shorts, the first one always seems to have a lot of views, uh, more so than the other ones. And then sometimes um, the other ones will kind of slowly build, but none of them will ever go higher than 500. Really strange, and I don't really understand it. Um, that's why I welcome all feedback. If you have suggestions, um, let me know. But the one big thing that you can do is, you know, watch the videos and subscribe. I'm getting close to being at 250, which is half of the way to um, where you can get monetized and, and make things a little bit easier. So, yeah, do that. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, stop this, but I will tack on the end the next thing I'm going to do, which is the comparison uh, Red Band Wolverine video. All right. Thank you.